More on the fight against ISIL. I'm joined here in our studio by Patricia DiGennaro. She's a professor from uh, New York University and international relations analyst who recently returned from Syria, and she teaches global security, as we said, at NYU. Great to see you. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Uh, you just heard there in Annabelle Vandenberg's report about coalition forces striking possibly eight civilians. They've been very careful up to this point. Are you surprised by this, and are you surprised that it hadn't happened sooner than it has? I'm not surprised by it at all. I think there were a couple reports earlier that there were some civilians hit um, outside of some of the areas in Aleppo and around that area. Um, none of these strikes are always exact as much as we'd like to think that always, you know, our air power is, is strategically mm -hmm. pinpointing exactly what the targets are. Um, unfortunately, that's, you know, there are mistakes do happen or or the information they're getting is inaccurate and therefore strikes will hit some, a certain target that you know, they got in, you know, the incorrect identification from. Would coalition forces be much further along in their campaign to wipe out ISIL if they had not been as careful? Um, <laughs> that's a very good question. I mean, it's a very difficult situation right now to, to, as far as wiping out ISIL. I'm not sure airstrikes are exactly going to do it. This is, this is kind of a tactic that's used to basically keep them in a certain area in order for Kurdish or other forces that are coming to the area that are fighting against ISIL to be able to operate in. Mm -hmm. Vice President Biden, as you know, has been in Turkey and is in Turkey. What do you make of uh, Turkey's uh, reluctancy to, to get involved? I mean, back in, what was it, June, mm -hmm. 46 Turkish prisoners were returned that were captured by ISIL when ISIL took over the Mosul Dam. Um, why has Turkey been so standoffish? Well, it's a, diff it's a difficult geopolitical uh, region. And I think the biggest problem in the region is that there are so many interests. And Turkey has to work within the context of all these interests, including their own population and their own uh, government. So this is a huge issue there. I think they've been you know, really standing back and waiting to see uh, what kind of you know, a lot of times these these regimes want to see a, a little bit like who's on the winning side and then how they, they can or cannot um, intervene or help the intervention. You know, Turkey has been anti-Assad, so I think they're going, they, you know, they've been apt to sit back and wait to see if they can actually depose the current government now and then enter into a larger scale intervention with the allies. But I think right now they're going to sit back and and just, you know, <laughs> let, let the situation unfold a little bit within the context of their own interests that they have right now. All right. Patricia DiGennaro, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time and your insight. Thank you.